broadcasting across the nation and around the world. It's the Not So Late Show with Brandon Love. Tonight, Josh Teske. And now, with the power of a straight eight engine, Brandon Love. Yeah. Yes. All right. Welcome everybody to the Not So Late Show. We're coming live from Cologne, Germany. We were going to have a backstage room, but we're coming to you live from the bus now. So we've got the Not So Late Show set uh, up here in the upstairs bus section. Um, and yeah, we've got a great show for you this evening. We've got the one and only Josh Teske coming on. He's gonna, we're going to have a chat about all things music and Teske related. Also might be able to coax a little performance out of him if his voice is feeling up to it. Is his, his voice? His voice yeah, yeah, his voice is feeling up to it. Maybe a little lullaby for you all. Welcome everybody. Welcome Melbourne. It's 6am on a Saturday. You're all crazy if you're up at this hour. Welcome LA. It's 11am, I think. New York 2 p.m. and London 7 p.m. I think I got that right. Who's Josh Teske? That is a great question, Hamish Fox. And let's find out, Mr. Josh Teske. Yeah. Woo. Brandon, it's hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, Thanks so much for yeah, coming on. Here, Jump man. in the frame. Here we go. Here we go. Ah, oh, man. So you just went out for dinner. You just made it back in time for the eight o'clock not so late show. We like to cut it fine. We like to cut it fine. We certainly do in Tesky time. Oh yeah. So tell us uh, what's. Uh, I mean, we went out live last week with Liam. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We got the catch up for you know that first part of the tour. What's been going on basically since whenever that day off was? I don't remember. We have. We've been a lot of places. We came on a. We came on a boat today. Over you know, in the bus on a boat. We didn't even wake up for it, so I had dreams that the bus was floating through the sea, <laughs> a little bit like Choo Choo Bang Bang, something like that. Yeah, but I was um, feeling pretty sick when it came, like as I woke up for it, and then you know when they were like, "Everybody off!" or "If you're gonna stay, you stay." I know I just had that moment where I was like, eh, "Do we get out?" We're talking 6 a.m. right now as well, so yeah, it was, yeah. Uh, 6 a.m. Yeah. our morning. And then yeah, and then it was so if you can imagine, you're in the car park of a ferry, in a bus, on a boat. So on water on on water yeah water below you so you're kind of like one minute the bus is moving and then the next minute the whole bus is like i can feel waves and, I'm yeah. like, you know, and it was a different kind of movement you're like you know yeah. when you're driving it's kind of that way like your head's kind of sliding yeah. back and forth but on the boat it was like this weird yeah Strange and actually sensation. i was walking around before to stretch my legumes and uh, I, I had the sea legs. Yeah, the sea legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah I was yeah, slightly yeah. wobbly. Had yeah. a little bit of the yeah. vertigo going on. So, it's true. And yeah. Whether it be bus vertigo or water vertigo, we'll never know. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So we came across from where did we play last night? We were in. It's going to come to me. Manchester. Manchester. No. no. Birmingham. 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 <sighs> Yeah, the UK, Birmingham. Birmingham, yeah. So. And then Manchester, the, no, Glasgow the night before that. That's right. And Manchester the night before that. Yeah, that's right. Any highlights so far? What's, uh... Ooh, I reckon, let's have a think. That was a pretty, I mean, it was a pretty special room in London. That was a pretty amazing uh, Shepherd's, Shepherd's Bush. Bush. That's a pretty, pretty special place. Glasgow... It's just an amazing city in general. I love that city. What I don't a, know what it know. is about Glasgow, but every time I go there, there's something, there's, I don't know, there's a homely feel to it. Yeah. Where it's kind of funny. The Glaswegians are very funny. Yeah. yeah they are very funny. Yeah. You know. um, uh, yeah. Do you have your phone on you, by the way? Uh, I do. Yeah, yeah good. Al's uh, will be sending through some of these questions uh -huh. that are too far Direct. away from my old eyes to read. So All right. if you All go right. into WhatsApp yeah, gotcha. and have gotcha. that ready, this is top of the state of the art technology. This here, is the guys. kind of TV show cool. we got now because we noticed a little bit of feedback we got last week was that there was a bit too much of this going on, like squinting, trying to read questions. Yeah, yeah. And good ones would go by while we were chatting, and then you know we wouldn't get the opportunity to answer them. So, so we've got this someone. This here is a cellular phone <laughs> for anyone who hasn't uh, well, dealt with one of these before. Yeah, yeah. And so a we'll smart be smart cellular phone. We're getting well. hand selected the best questions sent to this phone, and then we'll be able to take it from there basically you. but uh, that. also actually before we get into questions I had a little game I wanted to play with you Josh gotcha 
So basically, I've done a deep dive and I've gone mm. into your old MySpace photos. Wow. And I've got to pull them up and I want you to guess what the year is. Cool. So, All right, I love this. And is you can play it? at home too as well. So we're going to pull All up right. some photos, just right. random deep dive ones of Josh. And right. uh, should we get one of the members of the audience to, to pull them up? Oh, no, no, that was okay. No, 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 this, so I've got, to, I've got to pull it up. All right. Uh, here we go, here we go. Very good. All right, I've got to wind all the way back. Here we go. Now, this is a brilliant one. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> I love it, I so, love it. what year do you reckon that is? Okay, that will be... Um, that would be 2000... I'm going to say 2000... No, wait. Yeah, 2006... Close. Pretty close. 2007. 2007. 2007 right with the old beret. That was a, yeah, that was a good time. 2007. And I'm actually in uh, Alicante in Spain there, believe it or not. Wow. That's at the top of a mountain uh, that was right on the back of my uncle's property. And I'm um, away with, I think it was just solo on that trip as well. We went to the top of this sort of mountain and it's all this kind of old... Um, um, you know, almond farms and that kind of, that Mediterranean kind of landscape out there. Yeah, right. That yeah, was beautiful. It was awesome. That little, little, little selfie there would have been on a, one of those, uh, maybe like a fold-out phone or something like that. You <laughs> yeah, know, yeah. Like back the old Nokia days. flip phone, like the Neo from Matrix yeah, one. Yeah, I'm pretty yeah. sure I had one of them, yeah, something like that. You yeah, know? yeah. Uh, so, all right. Maybe we would have been playing the Bodhi tree pretty regularly right about then. That, I, I think so. All right. What about this one? Oh, all right. That was, uh, yeah. yeah. Now, I'm going to say 2000 and 2008. No, see, this is... 2010. Would, yeah, like 2010. Okay, yeah. Right, I would have said earlier too, but it's 2010. Yeah. You, uh, you can see Ben in the background there. Ben in the background there. Was, I think that was maybe at Guthrie's house or... I think this was in... The, you know what? It was in the city... I'm pretty sure it might have been Steffi Schnook's party. Shout okay. Out to Steffi Schnook. Okay. Yeah. Um, and it was a Halloween party, uh, and then we all. I remember getting the dresses because we had a whole bunch of dresses. We were at at the at um, a few of a friend's house. Uh, you know, Phoebe and Anna and all that's place in Coburg at the time. And we borrowed all their dresses. They let, they lent us their dresses, and then we we, we just thought we we're going to wear dresses. And we thought, what's scarier than than happy clowns in dresses for Halloween. That was the that was the vibe, and um, yeah, I mean that's all. I can well, it's lovely. Say about it. There yeah. was about there was about four <laughs> of us or something, I think, all like, with these creepy smiles on and dresses. It was. Uh, uh, I would have been doing my plumbing plumbing apprenticeship for uh, for about a year then. Some of that first year yeah, apprentice, yeah, well, something well. like that. Um, here's what I mean. This isn't you, but I just wanted to pull this up. Who's this one? I mean. How good looking is Matt Corby? Matt Corby, beautiful man. Yeah. Going kind to of get lost in those eyes, wouldn't oh, you? Wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh. Good man. Shout out to you, Matty boy. Yeah. I, I mean, I was just stalking through your thing and then, that, you know, I just found myself mm. looking at Matt once again and I just, you know, I thought it was worthy of the Not So Late Show to get him up there. He's a charming man. He's a oh, charming man. Lovely. Yeah. If there's any, uh, any uh, you know, anybody watching who's a fan of Matt, give us a thumbs up because we love him. Yeah. Now, this is a cool one, Josh. This is a cool one. Uh-huh. Explain, uh, explain to everyone wow. what's going on here. That's a special one there. So that was, I'd say, two or three years back now. Um, and we're playing Wave Rock Festival. And the original Charles Bradley's first album was, uh, you know, that's the front cover of it. And it's at Wave Rock, which is in Western Australia. And that's him lying back against the rock there. And it was really cool playing Wave Rock Festival because they talk about Charles Bradley all the time there because they had Charles Bradley at that festival before he was doing much at all. It was his first tour to Australia. He played out there, so there was a lot of talk about Charles Bradley this weekend. So we went up. Uh, Liam brought that those overalls for me, and we went up planning that I was going to get this photo and do, do the same shot that, that Charles did on the rock there. And it was, uh, it was a really significant night because we played the festival and there was a lot of talk about Charles that night and it was really um we had a lot of you know memories talking about how just amazing it is how much he's influenced our music you know especially as a performer singing from his heart and um what a incredibly emotional amazing soul singer and uh and when we got back into reception the following day this was the night um charles died that night you know so rest in peace man but uh yeah it was a crazy thing to to happen because when we woke up in the morning that was uh, that was the night he died 
Yeah, um, it was weird. So we just did that randomly. Yeah, without and yeah, then no idea. the next morning we heard the news. So um, it was a yeah, pretty crazy significant thing. thing. It was really funny. So it was like we were thinking of him. And um, yeah, what an amazing man, you know. So anyone who hasn't, uh, hasn't followed Charles Bradley's story, and check it out. An incredible story. It's definitely you know, a big influence of ours, which is, you know, definitely. a question we I got a lot of, you know, some mm. of Josh's influences. So there's one, Charles Bradley. Yeah. Um, all right. I think we've had enough of these. Oh, wait. So another thing that I got uh, last week was also people were requesting a bit more Clarice content. So there we are. There we are. Like there's, Clarice. there's Clarice in the shower. Uh, yeah. It was actually shocking how many people were requesting more Clarice content. <laughs> she's incredibly famous. You know? yeah, she, well, she makes it into a lot of... Uh, she's been in just about every recording we've ever done. Well, speaking of which, there, yeah, she know, but... she certainly has been a part of every recording we've done. There she is during Look the recording of Half Mile Harvest at, yeah, the, uh, yeah. at the desk. So. Absolutely. Yeah, she's always around. She's a very quiet dog for anyone who doesn't, doesn't know her. She's really um, um, just... Finds, she's a big dog, but somehow seems to disappear into a little nook somewhere in the studio. It's uh, <laughs> she, uh, great. You nearly broke through with her that time, but um, oh, she had yeah, a, and, and then, then I did. dropped a. She's a nervous dog as well. She's a rescue dog. She's lovely, but she's never quite warmed to me that much. You know, she you know she's always a bit nervous around most people, but you know. And I dropped a. Um, I dropped a. A metal water bottle onto a steel chair, like a big springing steel yeah, chair, and Clarice is right just, there, and she just looked at me and just ran off, got a big fright, and she's been nervous around me ever since, you know. It's yeah. Take a lot, it's going to take a long time to get, get To be honest, I'm still nervous around you. I, just, I get I get yeah. enamored with this charm. I know. It's just, awesome. well, you know, last week I feel yeah. like I was much more fluent during the show, but this week I'm, I'm kind of, you know, I'm a little starstruck. I've got to be honest, I'm a little starstruck. Um, one thing I wanted to touch on, though, I feel like, you know, you, you've done your share of interviews, mm. you know what I mean? Lord knows he's done his share of interviews. You've answered the questions about, you know, when did the band start, what are your influences, you know, you've done all that. Mm. But one thing I wanted to talk to you about, which I always found fascinating, was obviously you've got a history you know, in plumbing, that's your trade. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you're a fully qualified plumber. You got all your tickets and stuff. Have you still? Have you renewed the licenses? Yeah, yeah. I always, I always keep them up to date. Yeah, yeah I just so can't let go of them. You know, uh, sewage, yeah. all of that. You can do it all. I can do everything apart from I can't. I never got my ticket for the uh, below ground uh, sewage stuff. So any of the plumbers out there, there's a, there's a whole, there's a whole course for each category for each area. Every time you know you get, you so you kind of got your water, your gas, your roofing. So I got all those. You know, storm water, things like that. I never, I never did the uh, below ground sewerage tickets. I never got that, which is kind of, kind of lucky because the sewer was going in through Warrandyte and everybody was calling me about getting the, the sewers done. And uh, yeah. I, never, I never got that. I never got that that ticket. It was a big course to do. Never got around to it. But there was enough work in gas work and roofing work and all that stuff anyway. So I never it was never necessary. What? You know. Fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> now the real question was: so you got this background in plumbing, but I wanted to talk to you about when you went over to Vanuatu. Oh yeah, and yeah. helped uh, with the efforts over there to rebuild some of the communities and mm. sort of uh, I don't know. And you just got funny stories about like all the politics about the water oh. and how all that goes. That's incredible. King yeah. Willie was it? Uh, Chief Willie. Chief, Chief Willie. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So I just thought you could regale us with some tales of. A we'll just explain the whole situation. Yeah, basically. sure, sure. Well, I mean, after Cyclone Pam, it was, which would be three or four years back. You know. A lot of us uh, tradies and a lot of the trades I worked with, uh, we had a kind of direct connection with, um, with some pals over there in Vanuatu from uh, people that come and work in, um, in Melbourne doing picking over the, uh, over the summer. And they have a sort of a program where a lot of the, the Nivan crew come over and work in, in these farms out around where our Uncle Justin lives, uh, out near Mombolk and around there uh, in Victoria. But uh, after after sort of Cyclone Pam hit, we um, thought we'd make a bit of an effort just to kind of go directly help the the friends that we knew on this particular island, um, Epi, and go and um, you know just really just you know on the ground first hand help up you know just through over the phone just sort of chatting you know what do you guys need let's um let's go over and there was a uh, me and Sam me and Sam Teske, um two carpenter three carpenter friends uh, and, and and myself. But we basically just did a bunch of gigs, just raised a bunch of money to get a bunch of materials, and 
and um, what Chief Willie and a few of the crew on the island were saying that what we're looking into what they wanted was just a basically an aid post which I know so we built an aid post on Epi which is basically just a you know like a besser block kind of building like a solid kind of cyclone proof building as a bit of a first aid sort of center so it was a it was an incredible you know incredible experience to get this you know flew up fly on one of those tiny little planes under this island we just kind of sourced all the uh, put a bunch of tools over and started working on this on this thing it was an, an incredible project but I mean uh, and a bunch of the community there on Lemon Bay all got together and uh, we all we all worked on this thing together and uh, it was an amazing time it was really I mean they're an amazing people incredibly positive after what happened and um, and so you did a lot of plumbing there as well, setting up yeah. fresh water supplies to the yeah. towns and stuff like that? Yeah, or? I mean, we were sort of, not as much. I mean, there was they already had a pretty good water source there, but we were kind of, we were, you know what we were doing is we were sort of fixing up a little bit of the existing system. Like, it was oh, like, okay. there's so much water, there's actually so much water over there, so it's like not too much of a yeah. problem, but it's more like there was a lot of just kind of... Um, you know, they're just, I guess they're losing pressure in different spots all over the place. So we just yeah. had a bunch of, so they're missing heaps of just plumbing. Like there's these, these incredible tanks and these springs at the top of the hill on this island and, and all these pipes run down to all the different sort of, uh, you know, spots around the village. But it's, they're constantly leaking and there's little, you know, little sort of holes in the in bits and bobs there. So by kind of bringing a whole bunch of basically just plastic PVC sort of and, and poly fittings over it's just kind of like this patching up little odds and ends here and there and keeping it running there you know yeah can you explain the thing about the water and some of it goes to a different town like a different community uh, and yeah, there's like yeah, a bit yeah. of there's a bit of funny thing it was something funny <sighs> well, about that or well it's really it was really weird because it was there's a there's a big tank at the top of this hill and there's a couple of different villages that are all supplied by this one water tank which is fed from a spring like at the very sort of source of the island and there should be a simple way to be able to kind of there was a really convoluted system of how the because one village owned the tank and another village owned this other tank and so it was kind of the way it had been set up was this really weird setup it took me ages to understand because of the kind of it would come from this point here to go to you know from point a it would go to lamon bay from point b it would go to here but it would be a much simpler way to be able to kind of to join the whole tank up and then go to all the villages but after much frustration from uh, from some of the boys over there that I was working with they were kind of uh, you know to my I'm saying wouldn't it be much simpler if we did it this way but they had a very you know there's very a lot of politics behind exactly what about who where, gets where the water, the water first went to and, first and all this yeah. so we had to kind of set these tanks up in a really bizarre way because you know this village had the rights to it first and then it was this whole. It was this whole thing. It was. A bit, it was very funny. It's, uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. Yeah, I just wanted to. Uh, I just wanted to ask about that again because you know we always do the same interviews and you hear the same questions. Yeah, and stuff. but I just thought it was a really cool thing. The, you know, like, some of the background. Well, it's a yeah. look into like, the work you used to do as a plumber, but also you know some of the, some of the, the awesome things that you've managed to do overseas and you know help yeah. out this little community. Yeah, happy, so. awesome. Yeah, They're a great bunch. A great bunch. Shout out to to the Lamon Bay crew. If you're tuning in, there so you, know, go. you know. Chief Willie and uh, yeah. John and all that. Now, I've been ignoring these questions thus far just because I can't read them because my eyes aren't good, but we will get to good ones when Josh yeah. texts his phone. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to see We're if Al has texted in some. All right, we got some here oh, coming yes, in. Oh, yes, here we, we go. Are. Okay, so, so number one. Um, <laughs> Look at the screen and say hi to people. Hello. <laughs> hey, guys. <laughs> Thanks, we Al. probably should do that, yeah. Hi, everyone. Yeah, yeah there yeah. we are. So, down. all right. Kelly, Kelly Grantham asks, "What was your first guitar, Josh?" Ooh, that is a good, good question. Was it the Alvarez? No, it wasn't the Alvarez. Uh, I think I had a, I had a, I had a little acoustic uh, cork. It was. It was like you know that brand cork. Is that what it was like? Court. Court. That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Court. Yeah, yeah. The brand cork. It was cork. Yeah. <laughs> cork was the. Uh, the guy we met in Texas that liked, uh, you know, Court. Yeah, Court. Oh, remember I remember that. Yeah, at the truck stop. And, yeah, yeah, with the M14. And he likes, yeah. uh, he, he, likes he likes guns. guns. He likes guns a lot. Shocking. And it was a cool, um, it was a cool experience. Yeah, yeah. him. I remember that. That Court. It was an electric. It was like a Strat style. It was a wood body, like yeah. a wood grain body. Yeah, it had the, the gold one. tuners. It was a really interesting guitar. Yeah, yeah. it was kind of. Was that stolen or something? As in I you? Remember or what you bought it off someone? Wasn't there a funny story about that? You know what? I think. What happened to it? Do you remember? Someone in the audience. Uh, uh, we've got an audience member here, button in. Oh, what, what happened yeah. to it? I can't remember. I don't know what happened to it, but it had a plastic back. 
yeah, oh, that yeah, 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 that round yeah. plastic back on it. It was a strange guitar, but it was, um, yeah, so that was probably, but probably my most significant guitar that I got very early, because um, I had a, we had a couple of little ones like that. That was probably around, you know, 11 or 12, and at, at around about 14, um, I got my first Cole Clark. I got a Cole Clark acoustic, uh, like the Fat Lady 2, it was called, that's the model name. And um, I've still got that guitar to this day, so that was um, what we did most of our gigs for, for a good, you know, seven or eight years of playing around the place. That was like, they were mo I was mostly on that, on that acoustic guitar, kind of plugged in, and it's got some incredible wear and tear on it, you know. I'll, uh, I still, you might be able to see it in some videos. I mean, you can probably, yeah. if you see that, 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 um, that Cole Clark, I've, I've played that for many, many years. There's a uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, there's heat, uh, there's a few videos of it kicking around, I'm sure, at the studio, yeah, of you playing yeah. and stuff. And, you know, if you stalk Josh's personal Instagram, he's always playing it as well. So. Yeah, yeah, I'm always on that guitar. Uh, Temple Parry, or Perry, no, Parry, asks, what pickups and string gauges do you use? Ah, uh, well. Um, for ner right, so nerdy questions like this, Sam uses a set of, are they, what are they, 60? No, no, they're well, your pickups. What, are they 69 or 67? No, they're earlier, the 64 wound by Dave Paul. So there's 64 Strat pickups wound by Dave Paul who makes Orpheus pickups. Oh, Dave Paul. Amazing pickups and amazing, actually Dave's fixing your... He's fixing uh, Gibson my at the Gibson 335 at the moment. At the guitar yeah. hospital. So if anybody saw that uh, horrific accident, Josh's Gibson 335, the headstock was just basically completely Snapped decapitated. Straight so, off. Yeah. Um, yeah, the same guy who makes Sam's pickups is fixing that guitar. And Josh's pickups are just, uh, they're a they're custom the... shop 335 Memphis special thing that comes yeah. with that. So. Whatever comes with the, um, the, the custom shop um, 335, it's a... 1950, 1950, was it 19, I can't remember. Uh, it's a 1959. 1959, yeah. uh, reissue. Yeah. 1959, um, 335, Gibson 335, reissue from the, from the custom shop in Memphis, which is, which is now closed down, which is really, really sad. So that was the one sort of shop there in Memphis where they were still, you know, hand making all the guitars like that. And the neck on that, guitar that is really sadly broken at the moment was all sort of hand sort of hand cut and um and uh you know they do everything in the old way they make them like a you know you know they put all the all the old lacquers and stuff on it and things it's like a beautiful that. guitar it's a beautiful guitar beautiful and guitar. thank you to dave paul who's fixing it up now and he's re-lacquering the neck at the moment which is why i couldn't bring it on this tour with me and um, i'm playing the the trusty gretsch you know which is great uh the the nashville kind of gretsch but um the 335, yeah, the, the, all that old style lacquer's being done and he's doing, he has to do a coat, then he leaves it for a couple of days and he does another coat. And he's, uh, he gets very, you know, he pays a lot of attention to detail, Dave Paul, so he's, he's doing everything in the old fashioned way and it's, um, it's gonna be it'll beautiful. Be, it, you'll, get, it'll be, it, you'll get it back better than before yet, before yeah, he got it. Basically. Yeah, totally, so, it's, yeah. Gonna be, it's gonna be a bit of a um, thing. So, yeah, the headstock is broken off and he's rejoining the headstock back on. Uh, Hey Mika, we'll see you in Paris soon. Uh, Mika, just, do you remember him? Good to see you. Mika, yeah. he's a legend, man. He's a cool yeah. dude. Always um, comes to the gig in Paris. Good to, that'll be uh, good to see you, Mika. Yeah. Ben Dixon asks, what is Clarice's Instagram account? She doesn't have one, so it's just basically my like my account is just basically Clarice photos. So if oh, you want to get should, more you know, of that you action, make her one. You know? so oh, yeah, but then that's another thing. You know, I got the up. The, I got the not so late show. You yeah. know, I've got there's a podcast coming soon. I've got too many busy, things doing, man, Josh. You know, yeah. I don't know where you find the time. You know. oh, just, I tell you <laughs> what. Uh, Connie Kelly asked, do you remember the first time you experienced rhythm and blues? And if so, who was the artist or the song? How old were you? What were you doing? Hmm, I wonder, the first time. I mean, you know what? We, uh, you know, we were listening probably way before we discovered any Stax records or any kind of um, stuff from Muscle Shoals and all those kind of things. I think probably one of the first, you know, blues artists I've maybe listened to was Jeff Atchison at the, you know, out of the so Andrews Hotel. Soul Digger. So we, we talked Get about him last week. Picker. Did you? Yeah, oh, Liam yeah, was Jeff talking Atchison. about his early influences cool. and talking about St. Andrews Pub. Of course. So. I mean, we all grew up watching, you know, watching Jeff out there and watching Chris Wilson out there. Um, you know, uh, Sam Lyndon Smith and the, uh, you know, the 
the what was his original band called back then? Uh, the Honey Black, Drippers. The Black Cat Bone. All, oh, the, right. all the Honey Drippers. You know, they're all the all the people playing out there. And you know that I mean we were growing up on Melbourne blues before we discovered you know American blues really, and then and then believe it or not one of the first well you know what I reckon I was listening to like Stevie Wonder and stuff like that before people like all the stacks artists like Otis Redding and stuff like that, but it was um, yeah all um but probably you know we're talking around about the age of uh, eleven or twelve to, to you know watching all those you know those Australian artists do their thing um, Ash Grumworld he was out there at the pub we used to watch him as kids yeah that's right singing out at the uh, singing out around around our area whoa smokestack lightning I remember that oh yeah um, so Wickerian asks when you're travelling at the speed of light are your headlights any use to you Josh you know much about the th- special theory of relativity oh well when you consider, uh, <laughs> I wish I had the like lingo to be able well, to. Well, basically, pull this uh, off. you yeah, might be able look, to do this better than me. No, no, I could. Yeah, could. Basically, it's. Uh, I mean, look, the reality of anyone traveling, anyone with mass traveling at the speed of light is just impossible because you need an infinite amount of mass, and as you gain an infinite amount of speed, uh, you just become too heavy to to you know to go that fast. So it's just impossible. But even if you could travel at the speed of light, and you put your headlights in. Uh, mm. The special the theory of special relativity states that the speed of light is the same for all observers. So, um, there, Mr. Wicker Rian, or whatever your we name should was. start this like, hey, this could be like, you know, the Dr. Carl, you know, like the, any more of your science questions. All oh, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, well, this could get a... Um, oh, just the same, <laughs> uh, same guy, Wicker... Oh, it's Wicker Ian, sorry, Wicker Ian. Ian. It's the when the Instagram names are put together, it's kind of hard to read, especially mm. with dyslexic boy over here. Uh, <laughs> Wicket Ian wants to know if you'll play his 60th in July. He'll supply food and drinks. Sounds like a pretty good deal. What kind of drinks, Ian? Yeah, craft uh, beer. Yeah, like craft craft beer. beer. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, We'll get our management onto that. Yeah, we'll I sort out a that. good like, rider. No, no, yeah, Actually, that was another question we got. Uh, Bromman Cool, who we Bromman know, cool. she wanted to know what's on the rider, and I thought that was interesting because it's like I think a lot of people assume that you know you've got all the cheeses and olives and yeah, brown M and M's and all these crazy stories about all these wild demands. But just tell the people what we've got on our rider. Tell them, Josh. Tell well, them. As as a lot of people will probably know, there's one bottle of champagne that uh, which uh, Liam opens with a, uh, a different object each night. Um, there is a two sliced lemons. <laughs> I don't know why we always just had that on there. <laughs> I don't even know that. I don't know, I don't, yeah, maybe right. that's gone now. It used to be on there. I think yeah, it's because okay. we were liking to make hot toddies for a while. Wait, wait, wait. Come to Germany. We're in Germany, sir. Yeah, I love those ones. Nash right. time sheet. We're in Germany right we're now. In Germany. We're in, uh, we're we're in, in Cologne. Cologne. And we're playing tomorrow in Cologne. So yeah. When you're there, Jeez you know, Louise. Out, you know? Get start. on the Googles. I love it. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Know, just say we'll get to those ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like, sorry to yeah, cut yeah. you off. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So two slices of lemon. Uh, hey, there's some lemon on there. There's some pineapple juice. Brendan likes pineapple juice. I don't drink, um, so yeah. They've got to have something to enjoy. Uh, we have about. We normally just a slap. Are we state local craft beer when we can? So we try to get something from the area. Snazzy. Um, in capital letters, it says no plastic. You know, we just no plastic bottles. I don't know what are we. That's an important one. No yeah. plastic water bottles. So we ask, we specify like a big jug of water and some glasses. We love a. We actually have a like a pint glass on. We love to get this like a like a you know like a glass from a pub because it's the best way to to have you know. Well, it's good it's, for the environment. It's also good. Well, it's, I mean, I don't you know, drink, but it's good for the beer, right? Well, it's very important to have a you know proper vessel. The, to drink beer the from. ambiance, the essence, and yeah. the, the aromas of the beer yeah, yeah. when served in a glass. It's all totally. part of the experience. Yeah, when it? I go when we're in like in the states and a lot, a lot of the breweries and stuff serve their beers in a, in a plastic glass. I always ask if they've got like a pint glass out there somewhere, and I use the excuse because they sometimes when you know people don't you know follow the, the plastic side of things as much. It's just you say I just I, I would be. It would be a crime to drink this beautiful beer out of a plastic glass. You know what I mean? We got to not even just for the plastic factor. We know you know just a good, a good pint glass is the only way to drink a quality you know beer. I think anyway, in my opinion. But that's I mean that's pretty much it for the rider, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's about it. And then sometimes um, they might oh, be we, spirits. Sometimes you know a bit of a bit of you know some fruit 
platter or something like that. Oh, well, we should, bloody we should, da. We should get it in, in front of us or something. Maybe yeah. one of the other shows will actually read it exactly. It's quite, yeah, it's it's quite it's, funny. But basically, it's not much. Oh, we much. put kombucha on there. Like a kombucha. We oh, like did we? Kombucha. Oh, yeah. some, is there some still in the fridge? Or? We might have some kombucha there. Yeah, right. Because yeah, kombucha is a really good one when you're trying to um, um, not have a beer, you know, because you can't do it every night. It's uh, yeah, right. a good way to, to get around it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, yeah. Iwan Itzka asks, who thought of Hold Me? That is a great question because part of our studio audience is Mr. Sam Teske, the man who thought of Hold Me. So, Sammy, pop your head in for a moment. There he is. Hey. That's the man who came up with it right there. <laughs> yeah, that's so right. He, Paris. In Paris. Well, yeah, Paris. He was uh, tinkering mm-hmm. around with that. Yeah. I remember hearing glimpses of it on the guitar and then eventually it sort a cool, of... That uh, was a cool chat when we were first in the studio talking about Hold Me. It was... Um, Hold Me was, you know, could have almost ended up uh, at times like a band song, you know, we were like, because Sam had the, you know, the chorus and the words and this whole thing, and we were trying to come up with like a groove for it, you know, so we're all sort of sitting there, you know, going, oh, what would this be? And it took us a while to come up with the idea that this is like, you know, I think this is just, uh, this has got to be like an a cappella song, and um, yeah, and that just works great, just just a foot stomp and a clap. And so, uh, I mean, if it's good enough for Queen, it's good enough for the Teskies. It's true. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's, you know, two classic anthems, you know. Yeah. We Will Rock You and Hold Me. I mean, they've always stood side I by mean, side. I mean, on the but, same level, you know, if you yeah, ask me. Yeah, yeah. But it is a good one. I mean, it's the perfect, <laughs> it's just become a bit of a sort of feature of the shows now, too, for me. It's, it's mm-hmm. always a great way to get the audience involved, and it always sort of leaves me with a good feeling, and well, hopefully lovely. leaves all of you at home with a good feeling after the show as well. It's so. a nice thing. It's a, there's something about all singing together. I think we have... Um, there's not enough of it, is yeah, there? Yeah, there's. A, I think innately, you know, we we really um, all humans somehow relate to that kind of group singing. You know, whether you've sung in choirs or whether you've kind of, you know, maybe going back to you know church originally. You know, it would be just that. You know, there's people love to sing together. It's great, and when we get a chance to do that, to have a big sing together, um, I think it leaves a, leaves a warm, fuzzy feeling in all of us. It's great. Yeah, um, I'm a little upset. Chris Hemsworth isn't watching this, but. Um Chris. No, that's fine. Whatever. <laughs> Obviously, got more important things to do. Um, mm. GK AC Zalek asks, "Where you all played together for the first time?" Yeah. Question. Well, that's a good, yeah. I well, don't... you know what? It was hard because we were playing in bands that weren't the Teskey Brothers before we were the Teskey Brothers. You know what I mean? So it was kind of like we were. You know, some of our first bands, I mean, me and Brendan actually had a band together in about year, and year we were eight. in year eight or something like that. Yeah. Um, and what was the original name? I State think State of Mind. State of Mind at one point, that was good. So that was uh, uh, Brendan Love on drums, drumming at that point. Yeah, Brendan Love on, uh, on drums. It's true. Uh, Mr. Vinnie Ward, if you're listening, on the bass guitar. What a man. Uh, what a man. Uh, now plays in the, uh, you know, in, in many orchestras. And, you know, he's a, he's a classical He kind of, he turned his back on the rock and roll lifestyle. Yeah, and yeah. You know. Far too proper for the... But I believe, you know, he was a, a cello player in the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra and, and uh, now teaching. At the, uh, Melbourne He's teaching Rudolph at Stein the Melbourne Rudolph Stein School, course, where you and Sam uh, of course, went. You know, teaching so. there alongside Sam Linton Smith and all the all the goodies out there. Uh, oh, who else was that? Oh, Sam Allen, Mr. Sam Allen on the guitar, uh-huh. uh, and myself on guitar and vocals. Um, and Sam Teskey would have been around about ten years old about that point, so he was still just getting his chops together on the guitar he wasn't quite allowed to join the band yet you know <laughs> he's the baby in the band you know, and he doesn't know he's uh he's uh he's our baby brother um just two years younger yeah and um people often say that sam is the older like a lot of people will come up at the show and be like which one's older and they always guess sam which yeah. i find interesting but maybe it's sam's a father you know you've got a yeah he holds six a, year he's old got a now. presence Six, I think he's... Uh, he's almost six. six almost six. six. Yeah. So, you yeah. know... the old tired eyes. Well, he's a... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We both got tired. You know, and he's like... Yeah, that's it. The old tired eyes of fatherhood. You know? Yeah. And he's... um, Maybe it's the kind of like, you know... Because he, he's, you know, he's he's a little bit quieter, sit back, cool, like wise, calm, sort of, you know, doing single things. I kind of bounce around. And I'm all, you know, like little brother excited sort of vibes, you know. <laughs> 101 viewers. We've we've smashed the records. We had right. 70 last week. So right. look at this. We're we're going Take great that, guns. Liam Guff. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, Vandal Monique. Hey Vandal. Uh, hey Vandal. Speaking of fatherhood, now I, like Josh, I got to tell you, hmm? 
pretty much all the questions I got were baby related. Yeah, so, I know. Wow. I don't know if the audience knows this, but Josh is I'm soon a, to be a father. I'm becoming a daddy. Exciting I'm news! Daddy exciting soon. news! Thank you. Yeah. Um, so amazing. Duffy Carey wants to know. Wait, no, wrong question. Sorry. Five underscore two underscore one wants to know favorite lullaby to sing to the baby. Ah, well, I've got a. Um, it's a top secret song. It's a. It's a. It's a new song that. Uh, that uh, I've been working on, which is so mainly for my kind of practice of it. I sing a song. Well, you can get a little taste of it on. Um, Hannah um, Pavlova's Instagram, which is my partner. Um, if you check out her page, she's got some like uh, some videos of me. Uh, I've had to get in trouble for this. <laughs> you know, sing, you know, sing it a little bit. You know, you got all these followers now. When she wakes up, she's gonna sing like, "Oh, what do you say to go to my Instagram?" Yeah, yeah. But I think she's cool with that. I think she's okay with that. But anyway, so but I sing a song. You might get a little taste of it there, and it's called um, "It's You I'm Thinking Of," and it's. Uh, you know, you'll you'll hear. Oh, what do we call it? No, we call it Hungry Heart is the name. But you know, keep an eye out for it. So Hungry Heart's the name, and we've been uh, having a little bit of a muck around on that song, and um, it's been really good practice for me. To, it's a it's an old timey kind of finger picking kind of uh, more Delta blues tune, and I've been working on my kind of double finger picking style, and we're getting some really. And what I, what the idea is, I sing this song. Hopefully, this answers answers some other questions as well. Uh, I think I remember seeing a question that was similar, but because we've been making a tradition of um, I sing to my baby uh, every morning when we wake up and I sing the same song. Um, and the idea being is we're kind of looking for responses from the from baby to see if um, you know see if they respond to the song, you know. And um, and we have been getting some awesome responses because I've got a I don't I, what I didn't realize about. Um, about a baby in the womb is they move around a lot. I didn't realize how much they move. I don't there's know not much got... womb in there. There's not a lot. Not a... Oh, see what he did there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, not a lot of womb in there. But they. <laughs> but yeah, they. You know, they bounce around all over the place and they're kicking and doing this. So one time, every time I played the same song, um, they they kick and and they they seem to respond to the song, and um, which is really nice. So I hope that when I play the song to them when they're out in the world with us, I'd like to see whether they um, whether they respond to the song as well and, and whether, they, whether, they, whether they remember this song. So we're kind of doing some repetition with this tune and, and hoping that, and I guess that would be the lullaby as well, you know, and I've chatted to some other um, you know, new fathers about the similar sort of thing and they're saying, yeah, they've done similar things with songs and, and even kids that are a little bit older, they, you know, they remember the song and, they, and it sits really close to them. So I'm hoping to have that. So we're doing a bit of an experiment with it, basically. That's what's going on. Do you fear that, like, maybe when the baby's born and it's when they get a little bit older or something, you, like, play that song and then they're like, ah, ah! They might hate it. Yeah, yeah, that'd be funny. And that would be like, you know, seriously. That would be <laughs> claustrophobia. Like, oh, God, Jesus. Nah, nah, nah. I'm no, sure they'll up. love it. Um, I hope so, maybe. Yeah. yeah. You never know. We're getting a, getting a lot of questions, boy or girl. Now, you don't have to answer this if you're not, uh, yeah. if you're not comfortable with it. If well, you know, yeah, no, we're uh, getting yeah, a we're lot of it, questions. We're keeping that one secret. So, so that's a uh, secret, yeah, everyone. Yeah, that's a secret. So I know. Uh, he knows, but yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I think, you know, it's we good. Gotta to, keep, we've got to keep a few cards for our chest, you know, because this is such a, um, it was a little bit of a public baby. It's a bit weird because we're sort of, you know, obviously when... This you is know, more famous Hannah than were, uh, Michael yeah, Jackson's having, baby. You know, it's, it's like bigger than, I <laughs> know. Uh, it's been quite funny because it was like, you know, we obviously had to cancel a, postpone a tour a little bit during the timing. So it's been a really public baby. So it's been really funny. So it's been really lovely. Thank you for all that. You know, people have been really just, um, you know, bringing us some little baby gifts and things like that. To some gigs, oh, you got really some... Nice. Um, I got some little. Our friend um, Poppy bought some uh, oh, bought some Scottish out. baffies for you, which yeah, are like little, little booties for the baby, you know, which was uh, which yeah. was lovely. So it's been great, but there's a couple of things that we're so we're so public with it. But I'm just like a few things. We're like you know, we're just gonna keep the uh, the gender and the uh, and the name uh, just close to our chest until until the day, and then we'll and then we'll we'll let you all know. <laughs> You're not gonna tell them about Beatrix. Be- what is Beatrix? I thought that was the baby name. Oh, right, Beatrix. Yeah, of course. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no, it's Gertrude. Gertrude. All right, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Hey, who are you? Me? Oh, King Willie, that's who? Willie Weedy. 
Wow, well, are you a real king? Sure am. Huh. Hey, come <laughs> back. Boy, how'd you get so strong? Oh, I eat my Wheaties every day. Wheaties, huh? What's in them that's so good? In them? Wheat. You see, son, every Wheaties flake is one whole grain of wheat. It's simply Whoa. steamed, rolled, and toasted. Hey, how'd you do <laughs> that? Hey, come back. 100% whole grain Wheaties from Uncle Toby's, serving Australia's best. All right, and we're back. Apparently, there was no sound on that ad. Ap apologies. Um, that ad certainly brings back a lot of memories for me, the King Willy Weedy guy. I love the bit where he puts the bit of wheat in his hand and he closes it and it comes back cooked. But, uh, uh, yeah, Josh has just uh, rushed off to, I don't know what he's doing, get a tissue or a beer, I think. But that's all right. We've, uh, we've got... Uh, there was a question here for you, Sam, somewhere. All right. Oh, here we go. Sam, you can sit in for a bit. Here we go. There you go. There's the other Teskey. Sam, say hello. Hello. Lou. I don't know what that Lou. is. We could see... We could see... Well, I don't know. Whatever. I can't read those. Um, so, Mayoko19 says, One of my favorite quotes is when Josh says, I sing while my brother Sam sings with his guitar. I believe Hold Me was the track that featured Sam singing. Will there be more Sam Teskey singing? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Um, I've yeah. heard you singing a lot on this tour, writing songs yeah, we've, and I've been, practicing. So yeah, I've been I've been practicing, trying to work up some, doing some busking maybe, and doing some bits and pieces. But um, but yeah, I think uh, I think doing doing that little bridge section in um in Hold Me has been sort of a sort of uh, sort of a breakthrough moment for me because it's it's taken me a lot of courage to sort of. To um, to sing, I guess next to old old Josh here, because he's always had a, such a amazing booming voice, and and I've always kind of just played guitar. So it's kind of it's been a uh, yeah, it's been a real sort of journey to be like, okay, it's actually I've just my voice is what I've got, and I can just do it, and I can sing it, and I'm okay with that, you know. And and um and so now I'm sort of just just being comfortable with sharing my um my humble little voice, and um. And yeah, sharing sharing parts of songs that um that I kind of want to be sung with my voice, I guess, and and yeah. Well, that was another question we got was uh, I can't I wrote it down somewhere, but I can't remember who who sent it in. So apologies, but uh, they were basically saying you know Josh sings, Sam sings, your dad Rob sings. Is there anyone else in the family, distant family, you know, like? Cousins, Irish cousins. We saw your Irish cousins the other day. Anyone else sing in the family? Oh, mum. Mum sings. Mum yeah. sings. There yeah. you go, Jenny. Yeah. 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 Actually, what's out. what's Rob and Jenny's band they, called? They call themselves the the Teskey Mothers now. I think the Teskey yeah. Mothers or the Teskey I, I don't Teskey know. Lovers, Teskey fan. Tes I, don't, I don't know. It always changes, yeah. but but yeah. but, um, yeah. but they the they're, they're hitting it off around South Gippsland. They're, they're, yeah. Um, they're getting a lot of gigs now. Like so doing... Josh and Sam's parents, uh, they do gigs down in South Gippsland at the local pub yeah. there. So if you want to go see, uh, you know, get a taste of where it all started, I guess, yeah. uh, you know, go the, see um, that. Rob is... Um, get into the, uh, the, Tura, the Tura pub, or the Foster yeah. pub yeah. down in South Gippsland. Yeah. You know, while you're out there, go visit, um, you know, Gurney's Cidery. <laughs> you know that is a, just a, a must of a place. If you want some proper Somerset cider, like... They're making proper scrumpy out there. Oh my God, South Gippsland. On your way out to the prom. Beautiful bit of the world. It's lovely. Um, all right, we're gonna. Uh, can't wait to see you guys. Uh, yeah, we're gonna wrap it up soon because I really want to get you to play a song before because you only get an hour on this thing and we've yep, probably yep. gone too long again. But oh well, hopefully you're enjoying it. Yeah. I tried yep. to get to the questions, but it's really hard. They go by so quickly. But. Um, yeah. Hello, Marmo Beck and CB Bush 307. Josh, <laughs> hey man, had a chance to say hello after the show in Toronto and chicken out. So, hello. I don't hey know what that man. means. Yeah, <laughs> Toronto. That was fun. Yeah, that, that was, was a good. good show, yeah. That was fun. Yeah. Uh, quick Toronto, question. You guys were crazy. That was fun. Crazy cat lady wants to know out of the whole crew, who was the biggest jokester? Hard to say. I reckon that Liam's you know, a big jokester. Liam's, you know, but everyone's he's got a, a he's different. He's a quiet achiever, though. He's a you yeah. Know, like, he's more. He loves a pun. Like yeah, even yeah. tonight, he did a good one tonight. I guess so we just went. Um, what was the one he did about the? Because oh, we've just been and had a. We just had a strudel. 
Street. Yeah, what the was Apple it? Apple Strudel. What was so, it? So I was, I was asking, can we get the bill? It's like, oh, don't ask for it now because we're still waiting for our dessert. You know, you know, if he gets the bill now, he's going to get in a real strudel. Or he's going to no, get. Oh, he's going to strudel. Oh uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what he said. He's going to misconstrudel. So something like that. Very good. So things like that, he likes a good pun, Liam, and they're, and they're constantly, they're pretty consistent, you know. Yeah. Some are good, some are bad. So that's pretty, yeah, pretty consistent there. Uh, but um, you know, yeah. Apart from that, you know, probably then, stuff. probably, like yeah, and then probably, yeah, and then probably Brendan. I like a that. good scare. Like I like yeah. to, I, I like a good hide behind the corner for three hours waiting for yeah. you to go yeah. to the toilet. That's 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 one of my favourites. Yeah, that's true. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. More. Treats, yeah. How does fatherhood treat you? Well, dude, he's not a father yet, but Sam's a father. Um, yeah. Treats him quite well, I think. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. It's, it's, it's well, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking Whiskey to Whitler loves yeah. your uh, your recording case, Sammy, which is actually oh. just over there. But should, but I, should I give it to her? Uh, save, no, save, save it for your yeah, show, because yeah, I'll get yeah, you on yeah, next yeah, week. Yeah, we're uh, running out of time. Yeah, we're running out of time. So one, I'm going to do one last question, and then... Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to do a we're going to do a musical performance, which yeah, will be hey. exciting. Uh, the last question was oh, this is a good one. Bell tone. What makes Josh happy when he's on the road? Now I've noticed out of everyone, Josh, you sort of you really get into your own kind of pattern and, mm. and sort of try and routine, and you know, you'll get on your bike and you'll go do something for the whole day, and you're always out exploring. So yeah. what makes what makes Josh happiest on the road? Well, I'm. So I guess the big thing for me is I'm, I'm a pretty high energy sort of physical person. So I, what I really struggle with on the road is the, the lack of uh, physical exercise. So, you know, especially having a trade background most of my life, I've always used to get that through, through roofing and kind of moving, you know, just being physical. So, or having, you know, sort of, you know, projects that I'm, that I'm working on. So on the road, I get that. I need to, you know, I go mad if I don't. Um, if I don't get moving, so I, I mean, I travel with a with a little fold up bicycle, you know, Brompton. A little Brom- Brompton, if the Brompton people are yeah, listening. Uh... I love my Brompton. Yeah, they're a beautiful bike, a beautiful handmade bike um, from Brompton in you know in the UK, and a, an amazing thing. So I ride that around all the all the cities we get to, and then you know, yeah, and just um, just to get the get the blood flowing a little bit and get moving. So I, I really love, that's really important to me, just to be able to kind of you know get get moving around the place um so by i, I find I, I do that by by riding around and that's um that's really important to me and yeah apart from that as long as i'm getting my sort of my physical sort of you know exercise in and i'm then i'm sort of ready to go for i've burnt off a bit of you know a bit of steam by the time the, the gigs come around in the evening otherwise i get a bit stir crazy you know um there's a few questions too about like your voice fitness uh, you know, basically how you go out there every night and, you know, mm. manage to just belt it the way you do. And there was a lot of, um, you know, how many cigarettes does he smoke? How many whiskeys yeah. did he used to have? How did yeah. he get that voice? And mm. <coughs> I don't want to, you know, I mean, you can answer, but I don't want to disappoint anyone, but there's no cigarettes and there's barely any alcohol on this tour. So yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it's serious business looking after the voice for, for a run like it this, is, isn't it? It is, it is. I mean, so, I mean, this run for me, for example, apart from with... Um, with my Teskey cousins in Dublin, where I uh, indulged in a couple of Guinnesses, that was delicious. You know, I basically, um, yeah, alcohol-free every night, and uh, and no ciggies or anything. Just a lot of water, a lot of steaming, and it's kind of pretty serious business. And uh, and very little talking. So that's kind of my other thing too. It's all about. Um, oh yeah. So yeah. That's, so that's probably another side of the reason. That, that would be a um, good thing for. Um, mm-hmm. Part of right. the reason why I shoot up a lot as well on my own. Yeah, on the so bike. Um, yeah. Uh, sorry to cut you yeah, off, but like yeah. this is a good thing for people watching. Um, so generally, we'll, we play a show, and then afterwards, you know, sometimes I might go out, Liam might go out, Sam might come out, but often Josh doesn't come out, and a lot of people always go, "Oh, you know, where's Josh?" and that you know, and mm. they get a bit disappointed. But the 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 main, well, the only reason you don't come out is actually the talking part. Yeah, is the worst for your voice. It's it the singing me. is actually yeah. if you if you only had to sing, you'd be fine, wouldn't you? Absolutely. The, yeah. it's the talking that gets me. You know, and so. it's just a loud environment, and just that talking is really hard on Josh's the voice. Com- the so. combination of like singing and a lot of singers will will you know be able to um, you know understand this as well. It's like once you sort of if you've just sung a whole a whole gig and then the mixture of talking after that gig is just the worst thing. It's just, if you want to if you want to lose your voice, do that. <laughs> 
yeah. It's basically the equivalent of working out and not cooling down properly. It's yeah. the exact same yeah, thing. Totally. Um, so that's the reason why Josh sometimes won't come out. There's, you know, it's not a, it's not a, you mm. know, it's not a personal thing. He's not some diva yeah. going back to his trailer. Yeah. It actually kind of, you know, it's Just, a bit you know, upsetting sometimes. Yeah. Well, I'm, out of everybody, I'm probably. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm You're the most chatty. To, yeah, I really love. I love a chat. I love a chat. So. Um, so. It can be really. Yeah. Unless we can figure out a system of like blinks where Josh can come out and just you know converse in like sign language yeah uh, and we've tried know. it we've tried it it doesn't <laughs> it work it just gets confusing yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right alright well I think this is a good place to leave it hello Ryan Gilbert uh, I was very happy meeting you and Liam I was happy meeting you also Josh needs to learn to mime yeah well he's working on it uh, yeah. Instabred, thumbs up to you, mate. You. All right, I'm going to hand this guitar over to Josh. That's yeah, tuned enough. Here we go. That's enough. And Very Josh good. can uh, can play us out. All right. Well, I was going to do a tune, a little song I love to play. I've been playing for years by a, um, by an artist called C. W. Stone King. Oh, one of my yeah. favorites too. Yeah, and it's um. And he's, uh, for anyone who hasn't uh, checked out, you know, CW stuff, it's, uh, he's, does he define, is he like an, is he, is, we call him an, we, we'll, we're going to claim him, he's an Australian artist, and I think he might have grown up in the States as well. I think he but, was um, born in the States, but he lived in Northern Territory. Yeah, that's right, so I don't know. You Something know, like that. But, he's but we, we're going to call him, we're going to call him an Australian artist, and um, he does incredible stuff, incredible, um, uh, he has an amazing ways of, you know, getting a really old-timey sound with his records, and and he's got some beautiful songs, but a real favorite song of mine um, from him has always been a song called The Talking Lion. And um, it's just a great, great, really interesting story. So listen to the lyrics of this one, it kind of tells a story um, of, a, of a talking lion. And, um, but um, yeah, beautiful music. If you haven't checked it out before, CW Stone King, I'm gonna do my little version of, um, of his song, Talking Lion. I'm over in Africa mining for gold, oh, mining for gold. Long came a big lion, caught me in my hole, oh, caught me in my hole. The lion said, buddy, you plumb out of luck, oh. Plum out of luck. He made a lunch for me, Lord. I had to duck. Whoa, I had to duck. I jabbed that line right clean in the jaw. Whoa, clean in the jaw. Picked up his tail, dragged him across the floor. Whoa, him across the floor. Oh, I chained him up in the back of my truck. Whoa, in the back of my truck. I said, What's that you had to say about luck? Whoa said about luck The first time I took him was ten miles away Whoa, ten miles away Show the people living what this lion can say Whoa, this lion can say Oh, the lion looked round him, he started to cry. Oh, started to cry. He said, this man here punched me and he blackened my eye. Oh, he blackened my eye. Well, the people got angry, they started to shout. Oh, started to shout 
Lion said that's what I was talking about. Whoa, talking about. Well, they hauled me up in the courthouse jail. Whoa, in the courthouse jail. The judge was a monkey in an old wicked chair. Oh, in an old wicked chair. The monkey said guilty and the people all jeered. Oh, the people all jeered. He slammed his gavels at 25 years. Oh, 25 years. Have mercy. Now I'm in Africa wearing a ball and chain. Oh, a ball and chain. I'll never mess with them talking lines again. Oh, lines again. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well. That just about does it for us. Thanks for tuning in for the Not So Late Show featuring Brandon Love and Josh Teske. Hey. Tune in next week. We're going to have Sam Teske and a special musical guest. I'm not sure who yet, but it'll be someone fun. We'll be broadcasting from Paris, I believe. So that'll be, that'll be good times. Thanks for watching, everyone. So long. Goodbye.